How you guys doing? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, and today we have with us the team from Chibi Dinos. This is a verified NFT collection that has a Chibiverse and a token coming soon. How are you guys doing today? We're good. Fabulous. Thanks for having us. Do you guys want to give your names, give a brief introduction, and we can roll right into this? Yeah, man. Nick, thanks for having us, man. Uh, it's always great to, to hang out with you and the uh, and, and the boys. Uh, Jeremy Lindblad, CEO of Chibi Dinos, and we've got three of my colleagues with me here today. Hey everybody, Trevor Chafee, CEO of Chibi Dinos. Pleasure to be here. I am Charlie Cavalier, president of Chibi Dinos. Nick, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Oh, yeah. And I'm Chad, I'm Chad Cap, uh, head of strategic partnerships and business development at Chibi Dinos. Perfect. Great to see you, Nick. It's uh, nice to see you guys. Met Chad down in Miami for, uh, I think it was the Decentral event down there. So that's kind of where the relationship cultivated. Uh, and we kind of got you guys set up with Ferrum Network as well. I'm sure we'll get into the details on that. But do you guys want to just kind of go at it, talk about what Chibi Dinos is, how it started? I'm assuming that's with the NFT collection and what you guys have coming with the Chibiverse. Like, what does that include? What's going on with the token? And we'll see where we go. Yeah, well, why, why don't I give you a bit of background and then and I'll let the rest of the team give you some uh, some future insight. So we launched our collection, a 10,000 piece PFP collection of uh, little Chibi Dinosaurs. Um, individuals that were, were were huge basketball fans in August of 21. Uh, it was a 10,000 piece PFP collection uh, sold out in about 18 minutes and built a huge community around um, those that, that, that loved the art and, and the concept behind it. The majority of folks that, that were engaged were either anime fans or basketball fans. We sort of tiptoe the line between those two. But we realized quickly that the IP around what it is that that had been built, um, especially on the basketball side, was valuable. So we spent the last 13 months building out an entire universe around the play to earn ecosystem with the sport of basketball. Um, we launched our first game called Primal Pick'em, a daily fantasy sports-esque type um, uh, uh, Web3 backed daily fantasy sports game uh, about three months ago. And we're very close to launching our first ever user-controlled arcade style game in a couple of weeks. So um, beyond that, there are a million things that we want to talk about, including the, the coin, the, 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 the actual launch of the game and everything that we're doing. But, but uh, Trev, Charlie, Chad, any thoughts on that? I think that was a pretty great primer of where we're at and how we got here think that uh, we're just laser focused on getting our game out the door. Uh, it's pretty exciting. We built this game kind of working backwards from the inspirations that we got looking at the Chibi Dinos. So arcade basketball, something that's competitive and fun and an adventure game. And they come together in a sort of first of its kind gameplay experience in blockchain gaming or outside of it. Yeah. And, and Charlie, just quickly, Nick, before your next question, Charlie, do you want to give some uh, insight as to uh, sort of the uptake on the daily fantasy sports style game, Primal Pick'em, that we've had S some data on that? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, Primal Hoop is definitely the razzle dazzle, Nick. It is the arcade style, very flashy, very addictive in the best way possible, you know, user controlled video game that allows a gamer to control their own destiny in a play to earn game free of algorithms. For the first time that I've ever found, um, but personally, as someone who is not extremely talented at video games and definitely not as good at Primal Hoop as someone like Trevor is, <laughs> um, Primal Pick'em is a lot more up my alley because it is, as a you know, fantasy sports player um, and a very avid NBA fan, I can make daily predictions based on real life NBA and WNBA games. And as a result, with zero risk to myself, earn our hoop token as a result of being correct about those predictions. So the sort of TLDR for those listening in is make predictions on real life NBA games without any risk or betting or anything of gambling of that sort of nature and only risk getting a reward or a prize in return. Uh, we're looking to grow that user base and get as many fans engaged as possible because what we found as you know, Jeremy is very excited about as, as I was, he actually brought it to my attention a majority of our players didn't connect their wallet at first. So it is a true bridging the gap between what we're seeing as current daily fantasy sports players and people now getting interested in the crypto side of playing those fantasy sports. Yeah, That's really interesting. And, and, I work yeah. with or some other projects who are trying to make that bridge and they just haven't quite done it. I think you guys are really going about it the right way. I tried it out a little bit with WNBA, but I don't know as much or research as much about WNBA. 
So I think what's exciting with the launch of uh, the Shibby Verse, the broader Shibby Verse in your game, as well as Primal Pickle, is that the NBA season is right around the corner, something that there's probably more fans of, something that I know you guys have partnerships with P.J. Washington and a couple other big-name NBA players, which is really exciting. And I think the timing with the token generation and NBA starting and everything along those lines really lines up well for the users, the token holders, and then, of course, the company as, as a whole. You know, Nick, what's, what, 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 what Charlie was very humble about saying, um, as he should be, because we all are very humble about what it is that we do. But as president of the company, he did drive a quarter million users to um, Primal Pick'em website during the WNBA season in the first month. Which now, is pretty impressive um, for the WNBA, too. That's more the WNBA. fans than I even thought the WNBA even really has. Way, that's, without, that's, without, that's without a marketing budget, and that's without us, us, us launching it officially, right? So as we enter into the new NBA uh, season, um, when, when I say that uh, the big boys... Um, call them acronyms I, I don't want to use their names but but the three big players in, in in betting and daily fantasy sports if they're not they are knocking on our doors daily uh i do know that we've had beyond that conversations with even the the nba regarding what it is that we've launched on that front um that uh daily fantasy sports product is was built by the guy who developed fifa over at ea sports for 11 years it's the guy that conceptualized and developed nba top shot at dapper lab santi and he built that game for us so um forget about what we're, we're pr producing in the future what we've produced in the past is only going to get absolutely nuts but anyway let's use this time to talk about the future i guess yeah so I, we touched base on your primal pick em product your nft collection product and then the game is coming soon we kind of talked about how that's going to be an actual skill-based play to earn game now that leads me kind of to your token. The token isn't launched yet. You guys are still in pre-sale. Uh, we'll talk about some ways that maybe people can gain access to that after we talk about the token a little bit. You know, first of all, I guess let's start with Prime. We'll pick them. You can earn Hoop on there. Is there any benefits that you guys are planning on uh, for Hoop to actually gain appreciation, like a cost over there? Or is it more, that's more of your Hoop giveaway and that's just going to drive more users that hopefully start interacting with your play to earn game and some of these other things that actually drive more value for hoop holders uh, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right for the, from the get-go, we've kind of viewed it as a way to add value to people participating in uh, pick them. Uh, that being said, we do have full plans to kind of roll out our marketplace with hoop functionality over there as well. So right now, when you play through and you climb the leaderboards, you get access to these reward shops. Um, Hoop will see integration in those reward shops in the future. Um, but for now, it's really just to kind of reward people that got in the door and participated early on. They played in the NBA finals, they're playing the WNBA right now, and they're getting ready to go over to Primal Hoop, um, where they're going to see a lot of the real fun. Um, and that, that's also where we're going to see the majority of the token sinks and some of the real value driven from uh, our side on the Hoop coin. Uh, where new assets that are only available to holders of Hoop are available. Um, things that are incredibly competitive with the floor price of our existing NFT collection, uh, where there's really less than 2% uh, available for sale already to begin with. So that's that's kind of our approach here. Uh, we will be rolling out some token syncs for the Hoop coin on Pick'em. Um, but for now, it's really just kind of the carrot at the end of the stick. That makes sense. I mean, you can utilize that in the 250,000 users to try to get them, you know, utilizing Hoop and some of the other various ways. What yeah. also kind of excites me for the Hoop token and your ecosystem over there is you guys have been really, really creative with uh, ways to make the NFT collection not only appreciate the value, but like you said, only 2% are for sale, get people off the markets. Uh, and that's with this clout system you have. Anybody who owns NFT and holds it in their wallet. They're earning 10 clout per day. And then, like you said, there's kind of a, a reward store over there right now that utilizes clout. So I'm assuming you're going to take that creativity and really create a ton of ut token utility for the Hoop token in the future. And I think that's something that uh, users, holders, investors, speculators uh, should be excited for and something that kind of nodded my uh, hat to want to be kind of uh, an investor in Chibi Dinos as well. Um, so I'm smiling, Nick, because you read the me too. announcements. Yeah. I'm hey, I read them. I read By them. the way, <laughs> if, if anyone hasn't checked Charlie's uh, literally a three minutes ago Discord announcement, I mean, again, uh, I'll let Charlie go into that in two seconds. Uh, but but Nick, exactly what you said, right? Let's use 90 days of clout as a beta for, for how we're going to uh, incorporate our, our governance token hoop and, and our future tokens into this, this ecosystem. Um, what we've created 
uh, and, I, and, and I'd like to say we, uh, what Charlie has led and what we've created as a team has been pretty uh, uh, remarkable. I, I watch a lot of my sister projects that, that I'm invested in. I call them sister projects, but projects that I'm invested in uh, release staking platforms. And it's just an absolute nightmare. Um, Charlie, you just released an announcement maybe 30 minutes ago. Can you talk about that quickly? Yeah, um, so you know, for clout, that is absolutely our soft staking mechanism. I think that dates back to an idea that Trevor had actually at the beginning of the year when we were all together in a location uh, for NFT Week Miami. And it's absolutely right, Nick. You, you own your Chibi Dino, it's delisted. You earn 10 clout per dino per day. Uh, we have a marketplace set up where you can then spend that clout for things such as video game sessions with NBA players, NBA tickets, uh, other NFTs, um, as well as a very lucrative uh, travel and accommodations uh, expense for some of our whales that have enough chibi dinos. Um, they have a lot of clout and they're going to be have something to spend it on at the end of that 90 days. Um, another thing we just launched and another announcement we just did is all of our holders will be able to attend exclusive Zoom calls with our NBA players during the season. So this was something that was very important to me and we saw a lot of positive feedback at NFT NYC we spoke on stage with Terrence Mann at the event and gave the keynote panel at the Palladium um, Theater. And we received a lot of our holders saying that they wanted to interact with our players in that way. And we saw a lot of other members of the NFT community that were, let's be honest, guys, more interested in talking to Terrence than the rest of us. And we saw that our holders needed to have more value in keeping their token than in selling it. And I think we see a lot of that with NFT projects a lot of flipping, a lot of uh, you know margin calls and stuff like that. But I wanted to make sure, and this was important to all three or all four of us, uh, that our holders received more value from keeping their token forever than by selling it for any 2X or 3X that they might encounter. So if you hold a Chibi Dino token during the NBA season, you're gonna be on exclusive Zoom calls with NBA players while they're on the road, while they're in locker rooms, while they're on uh, whatever private planes they all fly on to get from city to city. And, you know, Trevor and Jeremy and Chad have absolutely made it possible to build all these relationships. And I was just lucky to come into a situation that had all these resources available to make it possible to give all these awesome things back to the community. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. Hey, 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 hey Nick, just real quick on that. So, so Charlie, uh, we brought Charlie in, uh, I'd say, uh, halfway through this process. We've been, we've been around for 13 months. Um, Charlie comes from a V friend background. If there's anyone that understands utility, it's Gary V and, and the mm -hmm. V friend crowd. Uh, Charlie literally entered into our ecosystem with a, a quiver filled with utility applications for what it means to be a Chibi Dino holder. And we are, we just hit the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we're going to create for our holders. And gosh, I can't even begin to tell you, let's follow that mold. Let's follow the leaders in the space and, and what Chad and the rest of the team and Trevor and I have been able to build. He's got a lot of ammunition, a lot of dry powder to go out there and, and, and really build some, some significant utility. Right. And just seeing some of the, some of the utility with the NFT collection got me excited for that. And then, like I said, I can only imagine that there's going to be crossover when your, your hoop token is launched as oh, well in your yeah. game and everything. So let's go to the, the negative side. Game five, as far as play to earn, has kind of become a undesirable sector for many investors and VCs. Unless you can find a way to kind of, you know, get past the massive inflation rates uh, with your token and a play to earn. So have you guys thought about how you're going to do that for Hoop uh, rather than just giving Hoop away to everybody for playing the game? How does that work to really protect the hoop value and the broader ecosystem. Absolutely. Um, early on in our conversations with, you know, advisors, investors, and partners, one of the strongest pieces of feedback we got was on the protections we've put in place to keep from an inflationary system that gets out of control. Um, the, the sector here has had enough time to become undesirable. And Cool. Given that time, we've had the opportunity to kind of learn from the mistakes of everyone else. We've seen the house of cards that has been built by plenty of other projects that preceded us. And that gave us an advantage in learning and looking around the corners on how to avoid all that. So Hoop does have a hard cap of 350 million. And Hoop is and will be the premium kind of reward for playing Chibi Dinos and 
getting involved in our kind of gaming universe. Um, that will be supplanted uh, down the road with an inflationary token called swag. Um, and one of the things we did from the get-go was look at ways that we can create a sync or a burn mechanism for swag that's nearly one-to-one -one with emissions. And I don't mean one-to-one -one like you got rewarded this and we're charging you that same reward down the line. Um, just that the number of events are nearly one-to-one -one and that they're done and implemented in a way that doesn't necessarily needle the end user. And what that ended up looking like were things that, especially couched in professional sports make a lot of sense. Um, they're, they're actually borderline world building, registering for tournaments, um, updating your bio uh, and cosmetic things as well. Just, just about everything that you could think of. Um, these are very small but burnable events for the swag token that will keep you know, the overall kind of emissions down long-term as well as some massive plans we have for a uh, huge kind of token sinks that will uh, we can get into that are based around the actual 10 teams themselves. That's good. So it seems like you guys are going to have a kind of a two token ecosystem where Hoop, which is the investable asset, is going to kind of be the premium reward token or the governance token. And then Swag is going to be kind of the inflationary token uh, in which, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a tradable asset. There's going to be value to it. It's probably, uh, you know, people can speculate on that, but that's not really what you're raising or people are speculating or investing on pre-sale wise. Uh, which is which is good to see. I think a lot of the mistakes that the other play to earns is they had a one token ecosystem and then people kind of invested in it. And that's what everybody earns for simply grinding uh, or doing whatever they're doing. And back then, a lot of the play to earn games really weren't uh, skill based. They were just kind of grinded out whoever had the most time hours in the day to grind and earn those tokens. And obviously that put a downward pressure strain on those tokens. So it sounds like you guys have some plans to make hoops successful and to make your uh, holders happy, uh, which is really good to see. Uh, did you guys also have some uh, video of the game? Obviously, guys, this yeah, is just... Yeah, Nick, we're going is, right into it. This is just, hey, we're talking about the hoop token, so let's see let's why people want to no, use no, it, I, you know? I, I would love to see it. Uh, okay. Realize this is still like a, a beta version. It's going to be a little bit laggier than, uh, than expected because yeah. of the Zoom call, and it's yeah. running through all these processors. And I think we're doing no audio on it. We want to kind of keep that a secret and allow the chippy teams to kind of talk uh, while the video okay. is showing. Totally. Hey, hey, as we prep this up, hey, Trev, can you uh, walk through uh, our progression of, of different gameplay releases, please? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what we found when we were developing the game and kind of getting into the nitty gritty here was all of the opportunity that building our competitive three versus three game uh, left us for kind of building out these gameplay experiences that were focused on one element of the kind of core gameplay. So what we're launching with and we're about to take a look at here is a gameplay experience that we built focused primarily on the offensive side of our gameplay, um, kind of honing and sharpening and introducing people to the offensive skills that they'll bring over to the three versus three competitive mode. Um, and we have plans and are excited by the possibilities of doing that with, you know, all three of the different kind of player classes that we've come up with for our game. So, um, and quick you know, question: this, Is is this the characters within the, in this game? Are they based directly off the NFT ownership yeah. that you have from but, the verified collection? But, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these these are all one to one three D models of the existing two uh, D NFT collection. And uh, moving forward we will be releasing new dinos as well as implementing our sort of breeding mechanism and all future dinos will kind of share this design language. So what you're getting a look at here uh, really represents the future of chibi dinos. And, and Nick, just one thing to, uh, to take account of as well is that, is that we'll be launching a, a fully fledged out marketplace that, that allows for buying, selling and renting uh, of these assets. So, these three-dimensional assets of which you hold the 2Ds for, you will have your three-dimensionalized asset that will be playable and ready that you can rent, sell, or use in, in gameplay. Um, here you'll see an MMO sort of hub. Uh, you'll see there, there are different aspects that are under construction, AKA three versus three style game, adventure game. But I think Chad in this, by the way, what a beautiful silver dino, Chad. I, who's dino? <laughs> that's me, uh, yeah. That's that a hell of a me. dino. So when you log in, you get to choose your dyno. You'll have your 3D representation ready to go. And why don't you go and show them uh, what Primal Hoop Shootout looks like? Yeah, I've already skipped past the wall connect step. Um, so I chose one of my dinos. 
and there's actually really cool music going on here but uh i'm just gonna play and i'm not very good at it so i wish actually we should have trevor play because we can um have him give away his secrets well a, a, a couple <laughs> things that, that that people should recognize is that when we built this right so there are a significant amount of arcade elements that are engaged in this project um so not only on the offensive on uh, on the the gaming side so uh you know ultra rewards three times spots things of that nature but there is there are difficulty um um arcade style elements as well that are going to make this game um significantly different uh in terms of its competitiveness so um i think right now we probably have this tuned to a to an easy format but when it launches um your ability to score incredibly high scores is is much more difficult you'll see sort of fireballs raining down we have probably about six different um uh ancillary uh uh negative arcade style elements that that make it harder to play the game so and and again this is one court we're gonna have multiple courts uh, you have the ability to slam dunk um the game is super fun super sticky um and and again offers you the ability to to test yourself um which is what the first idea was but also to be competitive when it comes to leaderboards and things of that nature it's nice to see it does i mean it looks like a really nice arcade style game kind of remains reminds me of the old nba jam brought to life within the chibi verse and of course once you start tying a token and leaderboards and you know clout and swag and all these different things to it i think it's really going to be an interesting play uh, trying to merge the gaming ecosystem with uh, cryptocurrency and, and value assets. Um, I know a lot of people have been trying to do that. Like you said, the other play to earns, they did it. It's just as far as an investment thesis have kind of failed. And hopefully you guys with having the NFT collection and the hoop and the swag and the clout can kind of make it a, a way that it's possible for everybody to really win and enjoy the game. Yeah. Hey, Nick, tell me on, on your side, do you know of a, a user-based arcade style uh, sports title that's currently out there fully tokenized? I do not. Uh, well, you do because you know us. Well, hey, there you go. That's right. And, and and he just played it for you. Like we could le we could release that today, right? And uh, so I guess let's get to some dates. You know when when is the token generation event for Hoop? And we can talk about how people can participate with that. And when is kind of the launch date for the game? Like when can people start playing with Hoop integration, swag integration, or two D NFTs coming to life? What are, what's kind of the timeline? I know it's coming soon. Trev, I think we discussed just prior to this call who, who we're allowed to talk about in regards to the token stuff. Uh, why don't you walk through a, a bit of a date plan uh, for them? Yeah, absolutely. So we're looking at the 29th for our TGE. Um, and then we're looking at the first half of October for actual game release. Um, we do have a bunch of kind of partners lined up for our token launch. We can get into some detail there. Um, we're going to abstain from dropping any names at the moment, but I would encourage everyone to keep their eyes on our social channels for announcements. Um, and then all of this culminates with a TGE and trading on the 29th of September. That's awesome. And I know there is one public one. So if you guys want to get involved in the pre-sale of Hoop, which is Shibby Dino's premium reward token and their governance token, uh, head over to Ferrum Network. Um, if you own 25,000 FRM and 0.3 FRMX, that does make you eligible to get an allocation into, I believe it is the strategic and private rounds for the Hoop token. Uh, oh, if you need wow. any help with that, I'll put all the links in the description below. If you need any help with that, you can DM me on Twitter or Telegram. I'll make sure you get squared away, get in the right contacts to be able to fill out that contribution form. Um, I believe that is going to be extended for maybe another week for Ferrum Network. And then I know you guys aren't trying to name names, uh, but if you guys are kind of dragging your feet, you want to do a little more research on Chibi Dinos, get your finances in order, then I know they'll have a plethora, two or three premium launch pads closer to TGE date. Obviously, that is going to be at the public round pricing, which is a little bit more expensive, but a little bit more favorable vesting and kind of does it in more uh, of an easier and transparent way uh, for people who may be watching this video. You guys have anything to add on to that? Yeah, we, we've announced our, our, our Launchpad partners. So um, we, we won't give you the exact dates on those Launchpad partners, but but we are we are lucky enough to be uh, tied to Game Starter and uh, Ignition, paid Ignition over at um, our friends at Master Ventures. 
Uh, they're also very, very bullish on our, uh, our our private sale on the VC side. So we're super excited for those two. We will have an IFO that we will not name names of yet mm. prior to that. Um, that is super exciting. But we're talking about, I'm just checking my calendar. We're talking about IFO in 10 days. So um, if... I, I keep forgetting that the fair and private sales at uh, private round pricing, uh, that's pretty remarkable. So uh, let's fill that up. Let's get that going. And man, oh man, I can't wait to, um, to see TG happen. It's been now, it will have been 13 plus months in the making. So we're, we're super excited to be here and, uh, and excited to see this happen. Yeah, when I first met Chad down in Miami at the conference, I actually sent out a message to my private group saying I found the next 100X guys. So, I mean, that's been nine months now in the making. So I'm excited that's as well. before you knew us too. That is before. I only knew Chad. And then I was with the Ferrum guys down there at like a private dinner. And we were kind of talking about the concept and some of the partnerships. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is this is a winner. So I want to be Chad involved. Chad has you that know? effect on people. Chad had that effect <laughs> on me. And, and Chad has that effect on our partners. <laughs> that's why he runs strategic business development and partnerships. So... Um, good stuff. So we kind of covered, you know, what you guys have now, uh, what you guys have coming in the future. Is there any other details you wanted to kind of share with the audience? Or anything I missed? Uh, the only thing I would say is I would really, really, really like to have people come and join our, our, our discord um, and, uh, and have them come ask questions. We are a team that, that I think, unlike many in the space, uh, at least I'm accessible 24 uh, seven. The rest of the team is ostensibly accessible 24 um, seven. We love to answer questions. Uh, my DMs are open. Uh, we, we are around and willing to, uh, to engage. Listen, um, you know, I built businesses, Charlie's built businesses, Trevor's built businesses, Chad's built businesses in the web two space, um, in the web one space. Uh, we know what it's like to 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 create a foundation of of success and a foundation of revenue generation and a foundation of of, of upside. Um, we and the rest of those folks besides myself have also built things like that in the Web three space. We have taken our talents into this space and we are ready for uh, a, a very significant event where we are going to we believe we're going to change the game of of play to earn gaming. So. Um, as you said, I don't know of another user-controlled arcade-style uh, player and game out there. I was ready to, to release one in, in March of 22. We've now waited an extra almost six months, so it's perfected. It's going to be very, very game-changing. So I, I hope that people get engaged. And uh, again, we're here to answer questions, and I hope you, you hop on for the ride. Trevor, Chad, Charles, any last words? Yeah, I'd like to add one thing. Um, you know, previously this year, we actually had PJ Washington of the Charlotte Hornets, one of our NBA KOLs. He actually wore a pair of custom Chibi Dino sneakers I want in the game those. versus the Spurs. I know, I me too. too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, what, what's fun is is Charlie is building out this, like, extremely detailed roadmap for all of our NBA players to wear their shoes that are custom that says Chibi Dinos right on the sneaker during these NBA games. And I would say look forward we really look forward to some potential like nationally televised games where our players are maybe even playing against each other or various times but we'll be wearing those sneakers on court so there's just a lot of really cool activations that are coming around the corner that we're just super excited about absolutely and i think my kind of closing sentiments would be to refocus on uh, the hoop coin and just let everyone know sort of what the plan is here in the near term, we are launching a new series of playable 3D dinos. Um, these will be priced exclusively in the HoopCoin, um, and they will be coming in below floor conservatively of the existing collection to, to present a real value and deal to hoop holders. Um, and doing this asset sale in our HoopCoin uh, right out of the gate to address those kind of concerns about inflation and the supply um, we can conservatively take out 40% of the circulating supply just by selling out a very small uh, allocation of assets um, at a very reasonable and value, valuable price to our community. So we're really excited about getting this all out the door and letting everyone kind of see the economics we've built out around Hoop. That's an awesome other utility right there. I just think that people should not underestimate how fun this project is. I think the most successful 
things in life or those that find their way into our daily routine, whether it be that Google search or that ESPN.com score checking. Uh, and for us, it's become primalpick'em.com, making your picks. Uh, and, you know, eventually it'll be playing primal hoop. And whatever the amount of time you have to put in, it's just, if you're a basketball fan, it is too fun to not incorporate one of these games and our uh, ecosystem into your daily routine, whether it's two minutes, five minutes, or 20 minutes, or two hours of playing primal hoop. And I think that the fun level of all these games combined with the earning potential um, make these an, really just a, a no brainer for me to you know, emphasize the selling points of, but really just a no brainer, I think for even our discord mods and members of our community to play every day because of how much fun they have and the rewards potential that comes with honestly having fun. Yeah, it's really exciting to hear. I'm glad you guys got on here. Of course, all the links will be in the description below. There's so many ways to get involved with Chibi Dinos. The easiest way is go to OpenSea, check out their verified collection, Chibi Dinos collection. I think the floor price is very reasonable where there are. They're telling you right now uh, that you're going to earn cloud, that you're going to have a 3D model of that uh, in the in, a, in the game. Uh, the next step would be if you want to be a speculator, an investor, a holder of their premium token, the Hoop token, you can either own 25,000 FRM with 0.3 FRMX and get participated in the private round. Uh, you need to hurry on that. That's only about a week left. Or stay tuned, as they said, they will be on a couple launch pads at the public round and an IFO from for an undisclosed source. I'm assuming it's going to be big because you guys do everything big. Um, I'm excited to participate in the Primal Pick'em, earn those free hoop tokens, and I'll be ready to uh, kind of deploy those hoop tokens for uh, some 3D NFTs to use within your guys' game. Thanks so much, Nick. Yeah, Nick, Thank thanks, thanks so Nick. much, buddy. That's it, guys. So stay tuned for your daily updates right here at Learn Crypto. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.